Arnold did it the way you said is not ideal. Yeah, guess what? Arnold didn't have all the answers yet. But he's Arnold, so he did. Folks, I'm Dr. Mike from Renaissance Periodization, and this is my dear friend, actual friend in real life, Menno Henselmans. Menno is one of my go-to fitness authorities. If I wanna find out about some stuff on some stuff, first of all, I look at just pictures of Menno, then I look at videos of Menno oh, with a mute on, and then I actually go read his lit reviews. Some of his summary literature reviews are the best in the business, and he just happens to be the person who has probably the best PT course on the entire internet, hands down. I tried to take it, I didn't pass. What that means is it's a really high bar. Another thing Menno is known for, and he's known for very many things, including looking almost exactly like Giga Chad guy, I guess is what people tell me. I guess, couldn't be. We don't have to kiss right now. Um, Menno has been an innovator from day one on unique exercises that are biomechanically, at the very least justifiable, and often very compelling. Things you don't have to do, but exercises that you can try in the gym, which you may not have seen before, or the version you've seen of them, isn't exactly what we would call remotely close to ideal. Man was a sharp motherfucker. He's thought the shit through, and he's gonna show you some exercises from the countries of Europe. And if you're not from the Netherlands, if you attempt these exercises, you will die. That's the only warning we have. Man, are you ready? Let's go. So let's talk about biceps training. Most people do biceps training traditionally with dumbbells, barbells, and that's actually biomechanically very suboptimal for the biceps because in the bottom position, there is no tension on the biceps. Gravity just pulls down, and with a dumbbell or a barbell, you're moving this way. So in the very bottom position, no tension on the muscle. Why is that important? The bottom position for the biceps is uniquely important because it is the position where the biceps is relatively stretched, where you get stretch mediated hypertrophy potentially. Lots of new research on that that Mike has covered on this channel already. Plus, in the case of the biceps, the length tension relationship is relatively unique in that you also have the highest active muscle tension. So the biceps is literally the strongest internally in the bottom position. If you have no tension there, you are neglecting both active and passive tension. So regardless of how you feel about the stretch media, the hypertrophy literature and all of that, you simply don't get the maximum tension if you don't overload the biceps throughout a larger range of motion. Recipe, use a cable. But unlike most people, where they stand in front of a cable, they do like this. Again, very little tension in the bottom position. And at this point, when the arm is in line with the cable, no more tension. So what do you do? You stand the other way. You have to keep the elbow forward a little bit. And then you do a bicep curl like this. And what you can also do, you can see that I'm moving. As I curl, I move forward to get high tension in the contracted position and in the length of position. So you get very high tension in the biceps throughout the entire range of motion. Now you can customize this exercise. If you stand further away from the cable, for example, you see that it changes the angle of the cable a little bit. If you stand very much here, it's more upright, less tension in the bottom position. If you stand very far away, more tension in the bottom position. When you start feeling that the arm is getting dragged back a lot, probably a little bit too much tension in the bottom position, so you want to find an angle or move the cable up where you feel good tension in the bottom position, but you can keep the arm stable. So if you move it up to all the way here, for example, now bottom position is super heavily loaded and you have to actively engage to keep the arm here. Most people find if you do it like this, the arm gets dragged back. What I like to do then, if you really want to overload the bottom position, stand a little bit to the side like this and curl this way. Now you see that if you get into this kind of position where the cable starts bending around your arm, no bueno. You don't want this, again, you lose the tension. The whole point of this exercise, not to go use super heavy weights, massive progressive overload, it's to get maximum tension throughout a full range of motion for the biceps and especially the bottom position. So use your body position to accommodate the resistance curve and get that high tension throughout the entire range of motion. Uh, what's, is there something particularly wrong with the arm bending back? Like if I can curl here, is that okay? Or do I have to have my elbow close to my body? Good question. You can get, let the arm get curled back at least a decent amount. This, for example, you do get actually more stretch because the biceps also crosses the shoulder. So you get even more stretch in the biceps if you value that a lot. Just like with an, an incline curl, you know, if you're on a bench and you're sitting like this, you're also kind of curling from this position. Imagine me on a bench. So that can work, 
it's a little awkward. And if you get to like this position, again, you lose the tension, right? This far back, when the arm and the cable are perfectly in line with any exercise, good rule of thumb, check if your arm is in line with the cable because there's no tension in any direction other than like a shrug. Perfect. All right, what's next? So another biceps curl variation that is good to overload the stretch position is the concentration curl. But most people do a concentration curl like this. Arm straight down and then really focusing on that. So here you have maximum tension, right? So they're really focusing on this level essentially of the biceps. Now, you have essentially no tension here and very high tension here and here it's actually still pretty light. Not so great if you look at the length tension curves and the stretch media, the hypertrophy research. So what you want is you want high tension in a bottom position. Well, how do you achieve that without using a cable, which would be a really awkward setup this way? What you can do is you can lean a little bit back. And the nice thing about this compared to say a preacher curl is that you can do it anywhere. So you do a standard concentration curl, except that you lean into it. So you still have tension here and you curl up like this. You can do lengthened partials like this or you can do the full range of motion, like this. And you see that you get about that 45 degree angle in the bottom position. And again, depending on how well you tolerate the stretch, some people have a hard time with their elbows, for example, you can do a little bit more like a normal concentration curl. And if you really want to overload that stretch, you can really go like this. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Get out of here! Hey, hey. It's bullshit! <laughs> You're not gonna get anywhere like that if you're quitting all the time. <laughs> Arnold did it the way you said is not ideal. Yeah, guess what? Arnold didn't have all the answers yet. But he's Arnold, so he did. Yeah, I think a general good point about all these things, like these days it's often Mike Menser said. Yes. Uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger said, Ronnie Coleman said. Dorian Yates. The thing is you can find bodybuilders that say one thing, say the other thing. And if you look at very big picture, the things that they do really have in common, it's they train really hard, typically really good genetics. You just need exceedingly good genetics to get to the top of the top of the top, plus special sports supplements. And then they do with very high effort and dedication and consistency for a very long period of time, they get these basics right. And then within these basics, there's a big range of people training completely to failure, people doing high volume, not to failure. Some people doing high frequency, low frequency, this exercise, that exercise. When you have all these massively important things dialed in for 20 years, all these other things of training that we are talking about, they are not as important as whether you just have Zeus-like genetics or whether you're on sports supplements or not. And especially if we're talking one gram or two grams or four grams. Yeah, I call it a little bit of a pump, man. Boys out here, baby. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Mm, yeah. Skull overs are a variation of skull crushers. Big difference between skull overs and skull crushers is that skull overs don't fuck your elbows. Plus, you can use the lats a little bit to get some accommodating resistance. So here's how the skull overs look. You want to be all the way at the end of the bench. And then if you were doing a skull crusher, right? It's like this. Now scroll over, you get, go over the head. Now you don't want to go all the way like this because now you have no tension on the triceps. So you want to end up in a position kind of like here where there's still tension on the triceps. Again, you don't want the forearm to be fully vertical. So you want to end up like here, which often also means you need to move the head up. And this, just by slightly changing the elbow movement, it's much easier on the elbows. It's been a lifesaver for many of my clients. I'll cut you guys right off before you comment. All the fucking guys used to do this back in the day in the 80s. You didn't invent shit, motherfucker, you fucking nerd. See, I did it for you. You're welcome. Now you can shut the fuck up. <laughs> Folks, hopefully you can try some of these exercises again Variation is a spectrum, it's a continuum. There are lots of right answers, and maybe one of these is the right answer for you. We're not saying these are superior exercises to do all the time. We're saying for a mesocycle, two, three, or four, give these a shot. If the stimulus to fatigue ratio for you is awesome, then definitely consider it. Menno, where can people find you to get more information about all your good stuff? 
Well, now I am on YouTube at menno.henselmans and on Instagram, mostly active there. Also, menohenselmans.com. If you're interested in a free email course, it's a great way to get acquainted with my concepts. But for most people seeing this, probably my YouTube is the most uh, what you'll like. When I'm scrolling on Instagram and trying to figure out like which cute boy to jack off to, sometimes Menno shit comes up and he's got these awesome posts where it's multiple slider of like little paragraphs about this recent study or recent group of study or lit review, he's myth busting. If you add him on Instagram, you're just gonna learn a ton of shit and realize that you're not nearly as good looking as you thought and maybe you weren't a real man that never grew to adult height and that's why you have no friends.